Now what? I don't know. We can redo it. Huh? We can redo it. Are you sure? Yeah. It'll burn four frames. Okay. You owe me five dollars. Okay. That would have been fun to film. <laughs> Do that again? <laughs> no, God no. <laughs> this is a film about a ski film. This film came about because of a couple of friends of mine. They're the kind of friends that, they're just kind of the lucky people. Those are my friends, Nico and Zach. Whenever they are together, things just seem to happen really well. And I don't know how it happens, but it just does. Zach had been planning on coming out to Salt Lake and it just so happened that on the day he flies into Salt Lake, we get a huge storm of 24 inches down in the southern-ish part of the state. So Zach flies into town and instead of going to the mountains that are right there, right next to the airport, we stuff him in my car and drive him another five hours south to where the actual snow was that we wanted to ski. One of the difficult things with being friends with people like Nico and Zach is that you kind of always have to be ready at a moment's notice. You have to be like ready to just drop everything. Be like, oh, I, great, I guess this is what's happening right here, right now. Yeah, okay, I'm ready. That's how this trip started. I mean, it was a phone call, I think, at like 12.30 at night from Nico that just said, hey, um, yeah, so Zach flies in in like six hours, storms down south. Are you ready to go? And so you just kind of put everything into a box and put everything into a backpack and walk out the door and like, yeah. I think I got everything. This is gonna be epic, dude. Feel, feel my camera, put your hands on it. So oh, warm. Nice it's warm. been sitting in the freaking meter, man. On that, on that dash cam. <laughs> Sherpa. I brought my camera, I brought batteries, I brought ND filters, I brought three lenses, I brought a drone, I brought extra batteries for the drone, I brought a charger for the drone. That was stupid. It's a lot of gear, it's a lot of things to keep track of. I also brought a film camera, plus I also had to bring like my ski gear, my avalanche gear, my beacon, my shovel, my probe, all the stupid stuff that you also have to have in order to operate in this kind of terrain. Like it's just like, okay, great, keep it in a bucket and be able to leave at any time. Like that's when these moments happen where everything comes together all at one thing and you have multiple people that are capable of doing multiple different things in order to create one single thing, as in a ski film about it. Like none of this would be possible without the technical abilities of Zach and how much he knows about avalanche conditions and how much he knows about snow layers and how to read the snow and how to pay attention to the things that he hears around him while he's out there. If we have to cross over these more open sections of snow that have potential to kind of all, if it slides, like it could be a big slide, you know, like the whole kind of thing would probably come down if you lost one of the pillars, I guess. It's not dangerous, but it's also not safe. You have to be aware of these conditions. And I know that my expertise for this film was not avalanches. That's Zach's expertise. I'm relying on him to be able to like, explain to me and talk to me and make sure that we are all understanding what the safety hazards are and where our current limits are with where we want to go and how far up we're willing to go and what we're willing to do and what we're all comfortable with in terms of safety and conditions. Like I trust him to be able to convey his knowledge to me in a way that I can accurately understand it and make an educated decision with him. Nico's whole thing comes into, he kind of made this entire thing happen. Without Nico, none of it even comes together. Nico's the one that's always watching the storm. Nico's the one that's always checking where stuff is going to be hitting and when it's going to be hitting there and how we could probably be there at this time in order to do it at this, like, like Nico just follows storms like people follow Twitter, you know? 
he's just like, oh yeah, baby, this storm's coming in and oh, but we're gonna have this one coming in on Thursday. Wow, let's wait and we hit that one and then we hit the next one. Like, like he's just this kind of storm wizard that just like plans his entire life around when snow is going to be falling in certain areas of the world. I was there five years ago and we went there. I forgot my skins, so we, uh, so we ended up just like going halfway up the pole. But I was like, dude, you can ski this whole line from the top to bottom, zig out for how many miles? 14.7, Zach? Yeah. And then you run up to this wall of red rocks, hoodoo towers, that just gets hammered with these couple storms every once in a while. Maybe every other year they get these 30 inch storms. So I think there's going to be enough snow where we don't have to do too many big waterfall drops, but um, that's kind of the gist of it. What do you think, Zach? Well, let me tell you about this place. <laughs> <laughs> Located in the U.S. state of Utah. It's a natural amphitheater stretching three miles with a depth of 2,000 feet, 2,000 foot drops, guys. And that's straight from Wikipedia, so you know that's true. Got red rocks, white snow. What could be better? <laughs> that's pretty much all you need to know about this beta. <laughs> oh, I like the Sherpies, dude. Dude, the Sherpies are living them. Probably really far because you're English and shit. I'm Egyptian too. You're Egyptian? <laughs> well, Hux, bitch, bitch. Um, no. No codes here. <laughs> Sorry, we're not quite to the box yet. I'm not gonna eat two. I could stomach a hash brown though, easy. Give it to the birds. I feel like you're paparazzi. <laughs> Are you ready for us? Is she ready for us? What can I get for you? And then question, could we just need to check a couple things. I don't know how to do that. Just being radically mediocre at things as well. <laughs> Cause that's all I am. I'm <laughs> radically <laughs> mediocre at things. Wow. I just think of like him skiing down Superior, going Mach 1000 and crashing. <laughs> and just like telling people that like, yeah, I get out, yeah. but I also crash. <laughs> Zach's another kind of person that just doesn't need any sleep. Like he's the kind of person that comes in from a flight, gets to the airport and is like, well, I've got four hours to kill. So I'll just, you know, do lunges in the airport. Probably he told us that he slept on a bench, but we all know he was in there doing lunges and like math problems probably. And then like we shove him into the back of the car where there's like no room at all because the skis are back there um, because I'm poor and I can't afford one of the top roofy bits. Um, so like he's all smashed in there with everybody's gear and stuff. You don't sleep too well when you're smashed up with like skis and stuff. And then gets out and just like, all right, let's just like tour all day long. Let's go as hard as I can. Let's, let's burn the batteries of this body as much as you can. Like he loves to just go and he'll just go and go and go and go. Like there came a time where we had done probably four laps up this thing. And I was just like, dude, <laughs> Like I, I can't walk up that again. I, no, I'm, I'm too tired. And he's like, oh, okay. Well, uh, I'll, I'll take one more lap and then yeah, we'll meet back in the car. You know, he's kind of like one of those jackrabbit people. But that's what makes him so like, capable of getting into so many beautiful and amazing zones. Like every time I'm with him, he takes me somewhere new and beautiful and I have to work really, really hard on I have to walk really, really far and keep up with this kid who has just like the lung capacity of a Greek god. And he's just like, yeah, it's fine. 14,000 feet, chill, you know? <laughs> He's fun to keep up with, but man, he makes you work for it. That's for that's for damn sure. Oh yeah. <laughs> I got pull the pull skirt up. Oh How do we get there? So we're up on the ridge right now. We'd have to gain that ridge, and then I bet you we could. I know we're on top of the plateau. I'm down for that. And then like we I have mean, our we have our. It's not like it's a long tour. No, and I think approaching from the bottom would be good because we don't really know what we're going into. True. We don't know how deep it is. We don't know what goes, what doesn't. Yeah. But I do think we should explore this and this potentially. This one looks crazy. That one looks crazy. I'd be and down for a long, I mean, that's not even that far. Yep. I mean, zigzagging, you're probably a mile. So, from this edge to there, into it. Cool with that plan? Oh, fuck, it is that. Yeah, I don't even know where to start. Dude, quit blocking the sun. Bro. <laughs> the thing about these trips is that they are happening with or without you. Nico and Zach were going and they were going to ski these lines. If I wanted to be a part of that, 
I had to pull my own weight, I had to haul my own shit, and most importantly, you have to be helpful on trips like this. Ready to go for a walk? Let's go walk. Let's go hike. I just go, I'm just here for the up though. Yeah, that, that camera almost makes you prettier. <laughs> We're in the way. <laughs> Woo, that's a hobble hole, man. All right. You made it look so much easier than I did. <laughs> above tree line it gets a little spook not as much beast no. it was kind of sunbaked too it was kind of slushy newish and we did hike all the way up to that that turtle rock right there that's where we transitioned because that's where it started getting spooked well our our crust has gotten a lot thinner and the lower half of this new storm is Definitely uh, more firm. Oh, gotta love it. Everybody in? Yeah. Are those trees at least so we can come on check it. Definitely steep enough to go. There were no ropes or axes needed for the climb up, but snow conditions on that steep of terrain can always be a bit spooky and unstable. We had just gotten 24 fresh inches, so no matter what terrain you are in, avalanche danger is there. It comes down to whether or not you think it's worth it to go and enter those spaces or not. Shallow. Huh. Interesting. I'm sure this got wind blown. Holy, that's so sick. Is it good looking? Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is the part about filmmaking that I'm not good at. Like I'm not very good at having a direct path or a direct plan of like, these are the scenes that I'm going to shoot and this is how I'm going to shoot it. And this is how the story is going to be. And this is what I want to say. And now I have told it to you and there you go. When I film these kind of things, I like to just kind of rely on what happened and press the camera button as often as possible at as many things that I think are pretty or important or just make me laugh. When I get to film with people like Nico and Zach, I find myself laughing a lot. I find myself being kind of like awestruck a lot. Let's go see if we die first. Just take it easy, one-on-one. -on -one. Make sure Kev's what, the talk, you kind of work. That's a cool little shelf though. I'm glad we did that. Yeah. <laughs> Worth it. Dude, there was like nine decisions made between those trees and here. <laughs> a little nervous, a little pucked. It's such an amazing feeling to be surrounded by other people who you can tell are just living their best and most beautiful lives. It's funny how an aspect can change everything. Okay. They're the kind of people that just get so excited about what it is that they are doing because this is what feeds their soul. This is what gives them that, oh, it's good to be on earth kind of thing, you know, where you just kind of want to melt into joy and never return back to the normal world. That's what it's like being out there with them. And those are the moments that I'm trying more to pay attention to, the moments where you kind of get to step outside of the minutia of what's going on. Are you yes. going back up again? <laughs> yeah, bud, round two. All right, Kev, I'm gonna go down the left gully. Is that okay? Let's hope that this cliff drop goes good first. Jump in.
Oh, my skis. We're good. I wish I could tell you more about what I did with camera stuff during this trip, but my technical ability with a camera, it's limited in terms of, I can't tell you why I chose the settings that I chose or how I chose them for what certain reasons. Because I, I did a lot of still photography when I first started playing with cameras. Now that I'm shooting a lot more video, I'm still kind of in that state of just make it not ruined, do the best you can. Like, yeah, that's really, really bright. So I'm just gonna like crank my aperture down and spin my ND filter and oh, oh, that kind of looks, hey, that kind of looks like an image, you know, like I'd, I don't think I've blown out the highlights. I think my shadows are there. I think it's in focus. Like I'm just kind of like hoping and praying and just like kind of like almost playing like a video game, just like in the camera, just like, hey, that doesn't, that doesn't look terrible and press the record button and just like then kind of forget about it and be like, yeah, it's, it's recording. It's, this is definitely working. This is a good frame. This is, this is what I'm trying. This is the visual story that I'm trying to tell. I lined up that on the rule of thirds and I squared that up to the golden ratio of the frame so that it could be backlit for cinematic uh, effect. Like, I don't, I don't know those numbers. So I just kind of gave up on them. That's thankfully I have Parker because he knows all those numbers and he gives me some settings that I can pay attention to while I'm out there to make sure that I'm not ruining everything. He's incredibly talented in the fact that I can give him a wealth of footage and just be like, here you go, man. Like I kind of go out and the way I think about it is I'm going out into the world to kind of gather colors and paint for my brother. I go to as beautiful of a place that I can go with as amazing of people as I can find and trying to turn a camera on in that situation to try and capture what that feels like. What is that emotion that I feel when I'm out there experiencing those things with them? Because whatever I am feeling, that's what the camera is going to try and, well, that's what I'm hoping to try and pick up with the camera. Those assets, those clips, these ones and zeros, these data marks that I have put into a computery system, I then give to my brother. He turns it into something better than what it was before I gave to him. He's, he is, he's getting paint and he's the actual artist behind the visuals and the sounds and how that story makes you feel. Like he's the one that creates that. I'm just giving him paint to paint with. But there's, there's value in going out and gathering paints. I enjoy my time out there. It's when I'm at my most happy as well. That's when I'm at my most like authentic self, I guess, that kind of bullshit. It's where I feel like I can turn my brain off and just be present in what's going on because what's going on is exactly what I want to be going on. It's those times in space where you don't want to change anything, where you could look around and if this is where everything ended and it was all done from here, well, today was as good as day as any. 16 eggs, fucking three bananas, and fucking jar, jar of uh, honey. <laughs> you feel great, you're gonna fucking die. These are the days that you kind of live for. These are the days that you think back on in 30 years and you're like, I'm happy I didn't sleep those days. I'm happy I kind of put my body through hell. I'm happy that I have these scars and these bruises and experienced some really wonderful moments with some beautiful people. We went skiing today, Kev. Yeah, we did. <laughs> we went up and down. Because I'm not hard over that cliff, so I'm okay with that. Yeah. Holy shit. That's... Dude, it's sketchy as fuck. <laughs> I didn't know it was beneath me. Again, I don't have any advice for you. Other than, no. I don't have any advice for you. 
So if you follow my advice, that's you following my path. And Kevin's path won't work for you. Your path won't work for me. I tried to follow other people's paths. <laughs> I can't follow the path of any of the photographers that I admire and respect and kind of are trying to become. Like, I, I have my idols. I have people that I'm just like, if, if that's what success is, like, that's the kind of success that I want. But the problem is their path to that success came because that was the path that they needed to walk. My path to success is whatever happens to be my path to success. And if you're, if you feel like you're moving in a direction, well, it's probably, it's good. Yeah, just go, go in that direction, see what happens. I don't know how any of this is gonna work out. I don't know how any of this is going to pan out, but like the goal is to just get as good as I can at telling stories of people. And maybe one day I'll get to go out and film something that nobody else was able to film. Who says you can't go for it? Who says you have to live a life of fear and being nervous of the world? Go out and experience the world. Be safe. Be as educated as you can. Understand as much as you can. Learn as much as you can. You can't just go out into avalanche terrain without knowing avalanche terrain. You can't just go on a ski tour without learning it, but also you don't have to wait for someone to teach you. You can learn on your own. It's kind of how I had to do it. But the first three or four times, it's like, all right, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go learn how this stuff works. I'm gonna go learn how to ski tour because more important than knowing what buttons to press on a camera, you need to know how to do other things too. There's, there's a quote, hold on. It's this jack of all trades shit that I'm annoyed about. So the complete saying, a jack of all trades is a master of none, but oftentimes better than a master of one. Go out with the intent to learn. Go out with the intent to get better at something. Don't go photograph or take videos of stuff that you know. Go out and take videos and photographs of stuff that you don't know. Go learn something new and see how you can take your camera into it. Get her, bud. Yeah, dude.